and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. You see, much of a room, Corbin. Take a look out the window. It ain't much of a town. Wouldn't need a whole lot more dust down there. You couldn't see Dodge at all. <laughs> That'd be an improvement. But well, things will work out. They always have, haven't they? You got a short memory, Quarter. Didn't work out so good up in Deadwood. Well, at least we didn't get shot. Now things will go better here. I sure hope so. What kind of lawman they got here, I wonder? Soon find out. Ought to be along any minute now. I sent word we'd like to have a talk right away at the Dodge House here. And by the way, who's going to do the talking this time? I'll do it. I guess that's him. You let me handle this now. All buddy. right. Come in. My name is Matt Dillon. I'm Ben Corder, Marshal. This here's my partner, Harry Duggan. Hello. Glad to know you, Marshal. You asked me to come here. You said it was urgent. It is, Marshal. It is. Now, Duggan and me, see, we're business partners. Whenever we come to a new town like Dodge here... We like to get to know whoever's running the place. And that way we figure there won't be any misunderstanding later on. Uh-huh. Just what is your business, gentlemen? Well, Marshal, we're gamblers. Now, what do you want of me, Dodgers in open town? <laughs> we make money gambling, Marshal. Sometimes a lot of money. We just want you to know in advance you'll get your share of it. I'm a lawman, Corder, and as long as I am, there won't be any crooked games. Oh, Dodge. no, Marshal. You know sometimes how a player will just lose a little money and then start to fuss over it? Maybe even go to the law about it. And when he does, he's usually been cheated, and before he gets to the law, there's another killing. Now, you can run your game, Corder, but you keep it straight or out you go. Both of you. Now, that's not friendly, Marshal. You've made one mistake trying to bribe me. You make another and you're through and Dodge. With them hard nosed marshals, huh? You'll find out soon enough, mister. Good day, gentlemen. You handled him great, Quarter. Just great. Oh, don't be a fool. <laughs> no better than anybody else. Got an idea we'll persuade him yet. Chester. Hey, Chester. Yes, sir. How's the prisoner? Oh, he's all right, Mr. Dillon. Just sleeping off his drunk. Well, it's getting pretty late. I think I'll get out of here and go to bed. All right, sir. Oh, uh, don't forget to put the lamp out before you leave the office, huh? Hey, no, sir, I won't. Get out! No, just stay where you are. Chester, hmm? can you crawl over and put the lamp out? Yes. Just stay low. Yes, I will. Ah, he's through. Well, ain't we going after you, Mr. Dillon? He had a rifle, Chester, and he was in an alley just across the street. There was mighty poor shooting if he wanted to hit me. What do you mean? I think he was trying to scare me. Show me how they treat the law where he comes from. Oh, them two gamblers, huh? Yeah, maybe, but I can't be sure. 
going to take the rifle. Go out the back way. Huh? Well, I didn't get hit anyway. But you might have, especially a man with a rifle. I'll admit I don't like the idea of being ambushed. I prefer to do my fighting in the open. Any idea who was after you last night? Well, it might have been one of those two men watching us from the bar over there. Huh? Maybe both of them. They look like gamblers to me. They are. And the one who just headed this way calls himself Ben Corder. There's going to be trouble. No, there won't be. Just sit still. Evening, Marshal. Hello. Right, pretty girl. Say what you got to say, Corder. <laughs> sure make it hard to be friends, Marshal. I just wanted to tell you I heard that you got shot at last night. So, well, I'm sorry it happened. Marshal, I sure don't envy a man who has to be a lawman. Man, it's mighty dangerous. Besides, it usually don't pay very good. What do you think I ought to do about it, Corder? Quit. No, that ain't necessary, Marshal. Because if you're smart, you can stay right here and make more money. And take less chances, too. I didn't know for sure it was you, Corder, but I know it now. What do you mean? There's a stage out of Dodge in about a half hour. You and Duggan are going to be on it. Oh, no. We're opening our new game across the street tonight. I'll take your gun, Corder. Wait a minute, Marshal. You can't do that. Yes, I can. But you won't do it. Hey, Duggan. What's your gun next? Sure, Marshal. Sure. Turn around and put your hands on a bar. All right, now go pick up your partner. You're riding the stage north tonight. Get going, Duggan, and don't ever come back, either one of you. Amos and Andy are nice to have around. Their sense of humor never loses track of its goal to keep you entertained. And when Amos and Andy or their friends aren't up to mischief, they keep you in a happy state of mind with music. The songs they play and the things that they say couldn't be brighter, couldn't be easier on the ear. So get in on the happy doings at CBS Radio's Amos and Andy Music Hall. Remember, it's always a joy to hear. stage, all right. I was there to see him do it. And just before it pulled out, I unloaded their guns and tossed them onto the floor inside. And then they left, and I forgot about them. I figured those two, like so many others that I'd run out of Dodge, would keep going and make their trouble somewhere else. But a couple of weeks later, I found out I'd figured wrong. I was walking up Front Street one evening with Doc. Yeah, I don't know, what you doing? What? Oh, hello, Doc. Hi, Chester. How are you? They're right inside the long branch there, Mr. Dillon. I just saw them. Oh, who'd you see? Yeah, them gamblers, Corder and Duggan, and they got somebody else with them, some stranger. Ah. I'll see you later, Doc. Oh, yes, sir. Sure, Matt. Him. 
We're back, Marshal. We brought a man with us to sort of look after our interests. You won't buffalo him so easy. Hello, Tuck. You really the Marshal here? Hey, yeah, didn't I tell you? They didn't mention no names. Well, what are you two talking about? What is this? Tuck Marlin and I are old friends, Carter. We worked and rode a long time together. We went through quite a lot, didn't we, Tuck? Too much. Yeah, I remember. So you've sold your gun to these two, huh? Is that right? That's right. And you're here to kill me. Yeah. I'm here to kill you. It was a bad feeling to meet Toke Moreland again after some 15 years and have him standing at the bar of the Long Branch hired by a couple of crooked gamblers to kill me. Toke and I had run horses together over in New Mexico until the night we rode into Silver City and got taken by a drunken mob and beaten half to death. The next day when they found out we weren't the men that they wanted, it was too late. Something had gone wrong inside Toke, and as soon as he was able, he'd ridden off without a word. I never saw him again until now. How long you been a marshal? Long time, Toke. I never figured lawmen for much. I want to talk to you, Toke. Come on over to the table. Here, no, you don't, Marshal. Shut up. I've got quarter. Come on, Toke. Is this your profession now, Tuck? Killing people? I gamble a little. Why do you do it, Tuck? I don't like people much. Not after what happened in Silver City. You recovered from that beating? We both did. We were young. That was a long time ago. Maybe my memory is better than yours. No, no, that isn't it. We both changed after that, Tuck. <laughs> we sure did. But we changed in different... You hate everybody. I just hate mobs. That's one reason I became a lawman. There was a lawman helping them that night in Silver City. He was the sheriff. Oh, there are good sheriffs and bad. Like marshals? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. It's kind of too bad you're a marshal, man. You're going through with this anyway. I never back off from a fight. What if I won't fight you? You don't have to. I get paid anyway. But you'll have to leave Dodge. You think I'll do that? No. But I'll give you 24 hours to think it over in. Anyway. All right, Tuck. That gives you 24 hours, too. I don't change. Talk's nothing to me. But money is, huh? It adds to the pleasure. I want to ask you something, Tuck. What? What? you enjoy killing me? You ain't Matt Dillon. You're a U.S. Marshal. Same as the sheriff. Same as the one who helped them half kill me, you two, in Silver City. Talk, you're stupid. You don't think. Maybe, but I'm pretty good, gentlemen. Yeah, sure. You can let Corder and Duggan run their game here. Or you can quit. It's a crooked game. There'd be fights, men would die. Now, I got a job, too, Took. 24 hours, Marshal. Okay. 24 hours. Dobie's down with the guy again, but uh, there's a lot of talk, Matt. I know you must have your reasons, but people are sure wondering what those two gamblers are doing back in town after you ran them out. That'll all be settled tonight, Doc. Well, I'm glad to hear. Don't go to bed early, huh? Might need you. A fight, Matt? You didn't have any trouble before. Oh, that 
other fellow they brought with him. Yeah, that one. Ain't there no way at all to stop him, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. I've been trying to think of some way. If there's anything in this world I hate, it's a paid gunman. I got no use for a man that can be bought for money. Uh, money's important to talk. I don't see how... Hey, wait a minute. You know where Toke is now? Well, he was in Long Bank a little bit ago. Good. I'll be back later. Sit down, Marshal. You know Miss Kitty here. Hello, Matt. Kitty. So we've been talking about you and me and Kitty. We've <laughs> been talking about me, too. Yes, and I'm not interrupting because I'd like to talk about you. Right ahead. But don't stay too long. She's an awful pretty girl, man. Maybe I better leave. No, no, no. You stay right where you are. Anything the Marshal's got to say, we can all hear. If you leave, I'll leave. It's up to you, Matt. No, it's all right, Kitty. Stay. Toke, what are they paying you to get rid of me? Seven hundred dollars. What if I give you seven hundred? Uh, to shoot them? Why, you don't care who you kill, do you? No, it don't matter much. I'll give you seven hundred dollars to clear out of here and forget this whole business. You have changed, Matt. You sure never were a coward in the old days. Is that what you think? So does Kitty. Don't you, Kitty? Don't tell me what I think, mister. <laughs> She's full of fire, Matt. She deserves a real man. No, I think I'll get my money from Doug and I don't want to leave Dodge. Not till Kitty and me get a little better acquainted anyway. Uh, now I am leaving. You're no good, Tok. You're really no good at all anymore. Wait till 8 o'clock, Marshal. We'll see you about it then. Sure. He just shot a man at the money table back there. But the other fellow drawed first. Okay, Chester, just keep an eye on Quarter and dug it. Yes, sir, I will. Hey, talk! Good evening, Marshal. You got here just in time. You kill this man? I killed him. Why? You objected to the deal. Tried to pull a gun. It was self-defense, but that, that doesn't matter. A crooked deal always leads to killing. That's why I'm running your friends out of Dodge. You ain't running us out of Dodge, Marshal. Go on, Toke, show it. I told you once, Quarter, I'll run this place. Yeah, Keep out of it. Sure, I don't need nothing. Shut up, Evan. I guess you ain't a coward after all. Get out of Dodge and take them with you. No. I'm going to try to kill me another lawman first. Okay. So long. So long. last 
week back again. Here it is. Here it is. Carter. Duggan. You get out of here. Any way you can, but you get out first. We're going. And if you figure on coming back with another gunman, I won't wait to shoot him. Now you get away from me. And now our star, William Conrad. You know, the legendary feud between cattlemen and sheepmen was very real on the frontier. It was carried to such extremes that cattlemen wouldn't allow their children to have lambs as pets. Well, next week, trouble comes to a sheep herder. But it's not a cowman who causes it. It's his own son. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. The Gunsmoke theme was composed by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Harry Bartell, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. William Conrad, co-starring with Academy Award winner Anthony Quinn, may soon be seen in his own production of The Ride Back for the Associates and Aldrich. A United Artists release. Join us again next week for another story on Gun Smoke. Wherever you go, go with radio and the CBS Radio Network. Say, how would you like to make a thousand dollars in just ten seconds? All you have to do is stay on the back of a wild, ferocious bull for just ten seconds at any performance of the Texas Rangers Rodeo and Frontier Day show, and you'll be paid $1,000.